Hey, you were wrong about the 14900K, okay? Strangers on the internet can't tickle your eyeballs anymore. But I kind of want to tickle my eyeballs with the Steam Deck OLED. Mm. But there's some hidden details. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, November 10th, 2023. Let's start off today talking about how somebody got their hand on 600 14900Ks and did a lot of testing on these bad boys to find out just what is the difference between them. So this is a binning test where they just examine, you know, what characteristics and properties can these chips hit six gigahertz at, especially since that's the rated clock speed that Intel promotes. And what they found out was that between the 14900K and the 13900KS, which is the predecessor that could hit six gigahertz, a lot of people were like, it's the same chip. No, it's not. It can actually hit six gigahertz at a lower voltage. It's slightly better. Slightly. It's slightly better. Mm. It's not exactly the same, which as much as we want to joke about it, it's a lot of engineering to make a chip that can actually run faster at a lower voltage like that. It is impressive from a technological human standpoint. It also doesn't cost more than the 13900KS did. So like, but it's not the same. It's the same to me, damn it. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, Starfield's never gonna be the same because finally in its beta update now supports DLSS. Woo! Whoa, that no. was like the biggest problem. No, it's solved. And also with this beta update, it has some performance and stability fix, GPU optimization, CPU usage being better. Everything mm. looks happy and rosy. You're forgetting about the most important detail. Yeah. You can now eat things off the ground. I saw that and I didn't realize that was a problem or a limitation. <laughs> Honestly, neither did I. <laughs> that was my bit for that one. All right, well, you likely won't be able to have bits on Tumblr anymore. They already shut down the whole porn thing. This is actually talking about the fact that Tumblr is likely gonna shut down at some point in the near future. It's allegedly on life support as its latest owner it sent out an internal memo just discussing how you can win or you can learn and saying that despite all of their efforts, they're not making the money that they had hoped to. And so they're gonna be transitioning staff away. The, the people from the product development side of Tumblr are now going to be going into other parts of Tumblr, like customer support, etc. So it's not great. And there are several other layoffs and issues happening out there. So I normally want to bring this up. Today seemed to be the day where all this is happening. Jezebel, which is a website focused on news, is also shutting down. They're laying off everybody. It's ending, according to their owner. But then Omegle is shutting down. How could this not happen so much earlier? Ripperoni. Oh my goodness. Ripperoni and cheese. After 14 years of what I would consider some violent behavior on that website. It's, it is it's, a miracle that thing <laughs> stayed up as long as it did. <laughs> so the founder was 18 years old when he created it, and he's saying that it's shutting down specifically due to the stress of running the site and the ongoing expense, and also admitting that some people misuse the service, including to commit unspeakably heinous crimes. I wonder what he's talking about. <laughs> so he said the fight was a never-ending battle and that the world has become more ornery. I think he missed an H, saying a constant barrage of attacks on communication services based on the behavior of a malicious subset of users and the existing stress and expense of operating Omegle and fighting its misuse is no longer sustainable and he doesn't have the heart to attack in his 30s. Oh, no, no, what that's he said. Not, <laughs> how did I read that so wrong? He doesn't want to have a heart attack in his 30s. That way, makes way more sense. I went on Omegle once as an adult and I discovered within five minutes of being on that site, three old men mm -hmm. engaging in hand thrusting. Mm -hmm. Polishing the one-eyed snake, if you will. I don't like that. And they did not care who I was. Mm -hmm. And then it, when they saw I was a human individual of mm -hmm. the male variety who is older, they immediately shut down the communication. And that was enough for me to say, this site is cursed. I am never coming back. Never again. But you know what's not shutting down? Allegedly right now, at least. You have to deal. Oh. oh wait, that, wasn't a, that was a rhetorical question. I wasn't really asking you. Reese. Please help. Hey, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And hey, deals. Starting off today with the Logitech G305 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse for only $29.99, making it $20 off. And hey, I might be a little bit biased towards Logitech mice. But next up, we have the ASRock Phantom Gaming 27-inch 1080p 165Hz Gaming Monitor, going for only $109.99, making it $70 off. And then we have the Bose 700 Wireless Noise Cancelling Headphones, going for only $259.99, making it $100 
$120 off for some of the best noise cancelling headphones you can get your hands on. And then last but not least, we're checking out something real cool thanks to our friends and channel sponsors Jawa with this custom PC from Toasties Tech. Featuring the legendary GTX 1080 Ti and AMD Ryzen 5 3600, 16 gigs of DDR4 and 1.5 terabytes of combined storage. I think this PC looks amazing if you're into the whole black and green theme. And you can pick it up for only $674.99 because it's marked down 7%. And don't forget if it's your first time buying from Jawa, you can use code UFD10 for $10 off your first purchase. And once again, thank you to Jawa for letting us check this out today. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, I got bad deals for you. And that's RTX 4090s. They're going up in price. 10% price increase within the last month. This seems to be a problem Ooh, that's happening. So there's a lot of reasons why this could be happening, including the fact that the China export ban starts in just a week. And so Nvidia might be taking all of their stock and thrusting it over there and being like, listen, we're, we don't, we can't make enough. Prices are going to go up. And actually, we're finding that a lot of these GPUs are actually out of stock. If you look at Best Buy, every single 4090 is currently out of stock. Additionally, a lot of the cheaper ones on Newegg are completely out of stock with the cheapest one being an open box version that is $50 more expensive than the 4090 supposed to cost the closed box. Stocks, man, line go up. So part of that could be due to the Chinese demand. It could also be due to the fact that the 4090 Thai might be getting announced in January, which we'll talk about in a second. But also Tom's Hardware posits a conspiracy theory that Black Friday's coming up. So they want you to think that things are higher amounts of sale because it used to cost $1,800 earlier in November, and now it's only $1,600. That's a massive savings. Buy our GPU. Buy it now. Thank you. The old Amazon special. That's exactly what they're <laughs> going for. And now NVIDIA is going for the cut down special, because with all of the embargoes and export restrictions that are going on with the NVIDIA GPUs, 4090s can't be sold there anymore. The H and A 100s couldn't be sold, so NVIDIA created the A8 and H800, and those got banned. And so now, they're moving on and they're making new GPUs. Now we have H20, which kind of looks like H20, L20 and L2. These are gonna be the cut down versions of the GPUs that they're gonna sell to China to make sure that they're low enough power to get past the trade restrictions and make America happy. They're being real slippery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, they kind of have to. They do a lot of business in China. He said doo-doo. I did. They they do a lot of business in China. And so losing that market entirely is uh, a very difficult proposition for them. And so whenever these restrictions come in, they can cut down the GPU a little bit more. That's why you only have an RTX 1650, because they had a bigger GPU, and then they serve up the, le the less one. And that's what mm. you, I get to lick up the scraps. You get the scrap licks. That's exactly what's happening with AMD's announcement on December 6th, advancing AI. They want everybody to know how they're also involved in AI. They want the shareholders to know that they're gonna make AI stuff. Look, we can do AI <laughs> chips too. NVIDIA, just because they set the world record and everybody's buying them, please pay attention to Team Red. We're okay, look at us over here. And NVIDIA is gonna have their own announcement on January 8th at 8 a.m. Pacific. Who knows what it is? It's a special address that's gonna be happening right before CES. The big thing that a lot of people are expecting is the Super Series on the desktop side. And then this is likely going to also coincide with like a laptop refresh because typically that's what they show off at CES. So we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see. Sounds like a super time to me. Well, AMD's having a super time. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about in a previous episode of Hot News that their Korean sales were actually going through the roof. And now we have broader reports coming through in market share research by Mercury Research showing that yes, AMD is now rebounding. After reaching peak heights of the amount of market share that they had, they have cratered over the last year specifically because the Ryzen 7000 series shifts were not as good of a value compared to the 12th and 13th gen from Intel, specifically in things like the low end to mid section because AMD is not even selling something like a 7300. You can only really get a 13100 from Intel. Now that has started to change with their numbers ticking back up. A lot of this is due to the fact that DDR5 prices are coming down, motherboard prices are coming down, and CPU prices are also declining, which is all a good thing. AMD had 20.5% and now they are finally back up to 19.2%. Look at them go. Good on them. But while a lot of people saw the improvement of AMD coming, not a whole lot of people saw the Steam Deck OLED getting announced yesterday. OLED! That's the joke I made before we started recording. Anyways, so 
this is something that Valve said that they were not going to make a Steam Deck 2 anytime soon, and the Steam Deck OLED is definitely not that. However, there are details about the Steam Deck 2 and some other details that you might want to listen in, even if you did already hear about the Steam Deck OLED announcement. So this bad boy is actually going to be pretty incredible. It's coming in at roughly the same price point as the previous Steam Deck with the OLED screen. It's going to be slightly bigger at 7.4 inches versus the 7 inches. It's going to have Wi-Fi 6E. It's going to be built on 6 nanometers. It's going to have a 50 watt hour battery, which is supposed to give you a lot more battery life. And because the OLED is more efficient, it's all going to be good. They also have price drops on the previous versions, the 64 gig and the 512 gig, in case you want to pick those up. But the OLEDs are the big boys at 549 and 649, also coming in with a new one terabyte version. They're claiming 30 to 50% more battery life. Wi-Fi 6E, it's going to be 30 grams lighter and run cooler. And it's going to have slightly faster memory coming in at 6400 mega transfers versus the 5500 mega transfers. Functionally, besides the OLED screen, they're going to be physically identical. They say that all the accessories are going to be compatible. And there's actually going to be a limited edition of the one terabyte version in the US and Canada, which is going to have like a transparent see-through colorway available for it, which is, it's looking beautiful. It's got orange. red accents. It's got performance breaks. And stating that the 256 gig model that they're keeping on, which is the new base Steam Deck at 399 is exactly the same as the previous one. It's just a price drop. Additionally, there will be a reservation queue when these things go on sale at November 16th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to buy it, that's the time you're going to have to be sitting in the Steam shop and that people can buy them one model per account per week until they finally get through the backlog and then you can buy as much as you want. But there will be a queue system in case they run out of reservations, which I'm like expecting is going to happen. They also answer that replacement parts and repair guides for the Steam Deck OLED will be available on iFixit, which is great to hear. And there's no difference in accessories. See, my thing is this seems like if you want a very affordable handheld, now is the time to buy one of the the LCD screens from Valve because they're replacing these. They're replacing them with the OLED versions. Not fully, right? Like you still get the 256 gig. The LCD is sticking around, but there is a price drop for sure. Yeah, 349. And if you can get the 64 gig on sale refurbished, they're selling it for 280, but they're only selling those until they're gone. That's true. There's really no argument I've ever heard that makes uh, the Steam Deck not the best value handheld out on the market. I will still argue tooth and nail. I will fight to the death that the Steam Deck was underpowered at launch, and that bothers me. I think a Steam Deck 2 is necessary, but I understand why Valve is going the console approach. And honestly, a lot of this just feels like Nintendo's strategy with the Switch OLED. Better screen, better battery life, better ingredients, better pizza, shakaroni. But also, one of the things I forgot to mention with this OLED screen is the fact that it's actually going to have 1000 nits HDR brightness, which is incredible, and 600 nits for SDR. This is going to be the best handheld screen out on the market. This slaps the crap out of the Switch OLED. It's not even close. Yeah, and we talked about earlier, maybe iFixit is going to also replace or have a replaceable OLED screen mm -hmm. on their website that mm -hmm. we could potentially maybe take the older versions and swap it in. I so don't know. I'm glad that you're bringing that up because Valve actually answered that question. Already. They actually already answered that question. And when asked, they can try, but it's probably not going to go very well. Why? So there's a lot of reasons for this. Number one, Valve has announced that you do not have to disassemble the entire device to get to the screen, which means it has a different mounting mechanism. Additionally, my guess is in order to drive the power for the thousand nits brightness, it actually has to have have a completely different connector. It's not the same display connector as the regular LCD screen. So it's gonna have a functionally different connection setup. And in order to actually put an OLED screen onto the LCD version, you would have to rewire the power, which I'm not capable of doing. But on top of that, because the OLED screen is thinner, it actually wouldn't sit flush in the actual device anymore. It would actually be recessed a little bit on the LCD version, even if you could get it all put in. So there's multiple variables that would make it very difficult. So actually swapping the OLED to the LCD is unlikely to happen for regular users. It's not gonna be an easy upgrade as far as what Valve has confirmed so far. Maybe it is the same connector and you it's just a matter of like putting a little bit of cushioning behind it so it doesn't like dip into the body. But 
not just talking about the Steam Deck OLED yesterday, Valve also discussed the Steam Deck 2 a little bit. Nuh uh. So they confirmed their plans that they are likely still waiting for a next generation APU. They're not going to go with whatever's on the market one right now. The Z1 Extreme, pathetic piece of crap for what Valve's looking to give us with the Steam Deck 2, okay? You get better battery life and OLED screen right now, and you wait for generationally changing performance. That's going to be coming in a few years. And additionally, they said that definitely they're excited to see how many customers they've been able to make happy with the Steam Deck, their eternal measure for success, and are looking forward to continue to make more Steam Deck models well into the future when asked Steam Deck 2. And beyond? When? When? What? What are you talking about? What are you talking? It feels like you're asking me something. <laughs> I didn't ask. I, mean, I ended in a statement. They talked about Steam Deck 2 and beyond. Yeah. And they said that, yes, they are likely to extend well past Steam Deck 2. Also in this article, which was really good to read, they discussed the fact that they can vertically integrate like Apple does because they are in direct communication with game developers. And so they can build out their software for Steam OS way better than other companies could ever do it for a Linux-based system. And it makes it so that they have a competitive advantage. But that does not mean just because they're like Apple in that way that they're going to be like Apple where they release a new unit every year. So they make they made sure yeah. to be like, hey, we say we're like Apple, but that does not mean new Steam Deck every year. You know how else they're like Apple? How? You can't easily play Fortnite on it. Got them. Mm -hmm. You can install Windows, though, pretty, that, pretty easily. That's not, not super easily. It's, it's the same as like you installing gotta, it on a regular computer. Yeah, well, it's not built in. No. Comment response wasn't built into hot news, but we still do it anyways. You built it in. I shimmied it onto the side. I'm built differently. Crazy Legs saying, finally, someone addresses the SSD longevity. Nice work, Brett. It's a substantial decrease in life of the NAND. Not his grandma, just so you know. I, I did think it was his grandma. <laughs> yeah, his. <laughs> thankfully, Apple giving us less RAM doesn't mean his grandma has less time here on the Earth. So. Thank goodness. Love you, Nana. <laughs> Pablo saying, multiple Vega-based APUs are still being sold. Brand new right now. I don't think they'll sunset those anytime soon. I would also like to show you that uh, the ARX 580 is still being sold. Brand new. I can go pick one up at my local Best Buy. Ooh. They have to. They got the little boys <laughs> just because they're selling it brand new doesn't mean that they're continuing to develop the architecture it's it's functionally dead to them they were just never sold so they on shelf they need sold Yes, they, they, they're not still actively figuring out how can we make it way better. Miles Carter saying, just for context, you can take your Steam Deck to 32 gigs of RAM for using $8 per eight gigabyte memory chips and put the used Steam Deck chips in the Mac. They probably realize that most users just serve the emails and tubes. If Valve can release a 16 gigabyte 14, $400 machine, Apple can bump us up to 12 gigabytes in the base model. There's a lot of complications with what you're saying. Number one, like you can't, put Steam Deck chips into your, your Apple system because it is unified memory. So the, the, the RAM is on the die. So when you buy an eight gigabyte MacBook and you buy a 16 gigabyte MacBook, they are physically different dies. The The whole SOC is, is, is functionally different because it's all baked in. It's not like you're swapping out RAM. It's all integrated. So it's not that simple. Why can't I put my used Steam Deck chip in my Mac? If you want to, I'll let you. Okay. I'm sorry for putting up a roadblock. <laughs> Ardon saying, I'm so hyped for GTA 6. Having played since GTA 1, I'm hooked on this game series. I brought this up because of the response. Somebody said, bro, live long enough to see all GTA releases. It came out in 1998. Kyler's live long enough to see all of the GTA releases. It no. hasn't been around for that long. It's no, only, uh, I'm only four. Only been 25 years. <laughs> Bro's 25 years old. Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's Momo says, second day of saying balls. Yeah, I saw that too, but I didn't see the first day. I didn't see the first day either. But I hope you continue. I'm like Omegle. We'll see you back here on Monday for more hot news. Omegle's done. What am I gonna do? <laughs>